makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. I'm really excited about today because this is going to be about body care, skin care, cosmetics, all natural. And I have with me Beverly Hyam, who is a highly acclaimed aromatherapist with 30 years of experience. Welcome, Beverly, to my show. Thank you. Hello, BJ. How are you? I'm very good. Very pleased to be here with you. You know, Beverly, I'm really, really excited about this particular show because... We all use cosmetics and body care, but hardly really have the knowledge as to what to look for, what not to use, and how to use it. And you know, what excites me is you're not just somebody who is a specialist in cosmetics, but you have very vast experience in aromatherapy. For about 30 years, you have been involved in product development. You're the co-founder and creative director of Potion Shop UK, which produces natural, organic face and body products. And I'm also very happy because you are a teacher, so you can explain to our listeners how to do a particular uh, uh, cleansing or toning or um, any of these rituals that you're going to be talking to me. Uh, You teach the foundation degree in spa management at Wigan and Lee College. You're the lecturer and course manager. Welcome to my show once again. Uh, And my very first question to you, Beverly, is what are the worst things that one can expect in cosmetics as in terms of toxins? Right, BJ, that's a really good question. And one of the key things that a lot of people are talking about at the moment is the use of parabens, which are there as a preservative. Obviously, when you're producing cosmetics like the great big companies are, they're producing products that they want to have a really long lifespan so they can be sat in a warehouse for a long time until their products are shipped out all over the world. So parabens have been used for many years in many of our cosmetics, and apparently they're even in food substances. Now, these parabens are the things to watch out for, and they come in all sorts of different uh, wording um, Uh, They're described as all sorts of things, but the key thing is at the end of each chemical constructed word, you will see the word paraben. Paraben. So uh, any word that ends with paraben, when I look at a product, I should avoid it? Yes. Yes. Why? Why should I avoid it? I understand it's a chemical, it's a preservative, but what are the effects of it on health? Why do you suggest that it should be avoided when there is legal status to use paraben, uh, and it's been widely used. Yes, you're right. It is is a legal status. We have to have preservatives in our cosmetics to avoid bacteria and other contaminators getting in there and causing um, us further harm. But with parabens, they have been detected in breast tumours, and uh, there's been research uh, conducted by Breast Cancer UK to um, explain that these parabens have been found in breast tumours and also in samples of urine, in the majority of samples that have been taken, um, parabens have been discovered. Now, these parabens do affect our bodies um, immensely, immensely. You know, they upset our endocrine system Mm -hmm. and um, they're they're mutagens, so they're very, very uh, poor for our health. And... We've got to not just consider our own health. Obviously, anything we use 
air comes out through our bodies, gets into the water system and affects the whole environment. So it's a little bit like uh, plastic because it affects exactly. not only the body, it affects the environment. I'll come back to one thing that you mentioned, which is about the mutagenic activity of parabens. But before that, what kinds of products are you talking about? Nearly every cosmetic on the market, uh, skincare cosmetics. For instance, yes. body wash, shampoo. Body wash, yeah, everything. Um, Lipstick. Had, had parabens in. Literally every body care product can have parabens. Can have parabens in. Luckily, because consumers are becoming more interested in natural, organic products, many of the big companies are realizing that this is a key selling point and um, thankfully are starting to change their formulation. Right. Uh, so, a... Uh, Many times, you know, when I go and buy a body care product or a cosmetic, actually, there isn't much that is really described on the label. So is there a fact sheet where I can go to, where I can find out if there are parabens in these products? There is. There is. And the one that I would recommend is there's actually, um, it's called the Red List, and it's been produced by the Campaign for Safe Cosmetics. Mm Mm-hmm. So you could um, search the campaign for safe cosmetics and the actual literature on there is phenomenal. It's really easy and they list, uh, for instance, maybe the seven top chemicals to watch out for in cosmetics. Mm -hmm. And you can even see some of your favorite brands and they they rate those. Um, So I would definitely recommend um, listeners and yourself to to check that out. Okay, now that's useful information, Beverly. And coming back to what you mentioned earlier, that parabens actually have a mutagenic activity. Just for those listeners who don't understand this particular term, is that it ha- it actually supports mutation of uh, uh, the cells and tissues, which then can result in tumor and cancer. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And uh, you work for Breast Care UK or you work with them? Uh, uh, no, I don't work for them, but obviously with uh, making um, the brand, uh, the organic brand uh, that I create along with my business partner, we attend events and we were very lucky that at one of the Free From events in London, actually, we um, saw this, uh, a stand, uh, a fellow... Um, um, a fellow um, promoter there at the event who was promoting the use of healthy cosmetics, natural cosmetics mm-hmm. and organic, and that was Breast Cancer UK. So we gathered some of their fact sheets so that we could educate the people who were already um, using our products. And as you described me as a teacher, uh, teaching the spa management course, I come into contact with a lot of young women Mm -hmm. Many of them come from school at the age of 16 and they're coming into the beauty industry, which can be described as a highly toxic industry with cosmetics the way they are. And so I'm hoping to change their view straight away at 16 and and, um, educate them to become more conscious consumers, to be aware of what they're putting on their hair, their bodies, skin. That's fantastic, Beverly. I'm going to, in this interview, talk to you about uh, Breast Balm, uh, which uh, uh, you have been producing, uh, which uh, Yulia Graves, who I've interviewed before, has developed, which is something all women can make at home. Uh, but, you know, before going to uh, some of the recipes which you will be sharing in this interview, The first thing is, okay, now I know that there are some toxins or possible toxins in cosmetics and body care products. And I go to my bathroom, what should I look for? How can I declutter my bathroom of all the toxic cosmetics? Right. Well, obviously, if you've not been aware of the use of natural cosmetics, you've been buying uh, whatever's been advertised or sold in your local supermarket or chemist so let's think of some of the products um, contain um, an ingredient called 
SLS. And in fact, when people are marketing natural products, they they uh, often say free from SLS, that's sodium lauryl sulfate. Right. That is um, a foaming agent, which you probably will find is in a lot of your shower gel, yes. and, uh, shampoos, face wash. So check that out first. Well, because, why um, is it harmful, Beverly? Is that because there's a link with uh, Alzheimer's and other neurological conditions and uh, autoimmune conditions and SLS? Yes, that's exactly why. Again, with the same uh, with the parabens, they, they affect our body systems and disrupt it in many, many ways. And in fact, one of the things sodium lauryl sulfate is used for is that it's a very very good foaming agent so it makes your shampoo really frothy and people think oh this is a wonderful product because i'm getting so many bubbles yes. but what it's actually doing is in some cases especially um, the shampoos that are designed for conditions such as dandruff yeah. they're actually they may be getting rid of the dandruff but they're also damaging your hair follicles yes and Damaging the hair follicles can you can um, can cause thinning hair. Mm -hmm. and that's a big problem. Um, and shampoos to make the hair thicker when actually it's having the opposite effect. So I definitely look for that chemical listed on your products in the bathroom. So paraben, um, SLS, anything else I need to look for in my bathroom yes. to throw out? Uh, there's a very long word that you cosmetic industry we abbreviate it to the word m1 but a lot of companies have been in trouble for adding this to their products and it's methyl isothiazolinine which is a chemical described as m1 so have a look for anything beginning with the word m that is a long chain of a chemical terminology Okay, and what does that do? Again, it's another life extender of a product and one that has been um, proven to cause things like dermatitis and other um, skin-related uh, irritations. Yes. In many products, it has now been banned, but what we tend to do is keep a multitude of different products in our bathrooms that we very rarely use. Um, we might buy something and think, oh, I'll save that, such as an exotic perfume or body lotion, and think, I'll save that for um, a special occasion. Yes. And then we never use it. So we have products in our bathrooms that are well past the sell-by date. Yes. And best before, um, um, used before date. And so that's another thing that I would recommend lis uh, listeners go and do is check the life, um, the, uh, the life of the products. Yes, I think, you know, this is a very important message because cosmetics are so expensive and that uh, special things, we tend to save it for years. And if you really use something that's natural, you know, any natural product naturally becomes rancid because of oxidation, then you throw it away. But with all these preservatives, you would never be able to make out whether it is good or not. That's right, that's right. We keep them, we store them in our bathrooms and um, our cupboards are full of all this clutter and we need to really go through that. And, and, you know, we're talking about detoxifying ourselves, so detox the bathroom first. Yeah. So, Beverly, I got three important messages talking to you. One is to look for paraben, to look for sodium lauryl sulfate, SLS, and M1, which is the long yes. methyl chain chemical. Uh, yeah. Anything else? Uh, the other thing that's quite uh, current that um, uh, we're trying to raise awareness about is microbeads. Lots of exfoliating products contain these plastic beads that have, um, we use them to exfoliate our skin to take us through a process that we call desquamation mm -hmm. to get rid of the dead layer of skin so the new healthy skin can come through. But we use products that contain these microbeads that then when they go down into our sewerage system have a terrible effect on the environment. They get into our rivers, into our seas and affect, um, uh, affect life and the, and the planet. 
So that's another thing that we need to be aware of. And how do we look for that on a product, on a label? It will actually, it will actually state if these are, are being used um, when there are uh, numerous natural alternatives for exfoliation, yes. such as um, powdered bamboo, mm-hmm. uh, sugar, salt. Uh, there's so many other things that we can use. Even um, fine ground oatmeal is a fantastic exfoliator. Yes. So natural and um, is going to have no harm on the environment. Okay, so, you know, uh, that brings us to, you know, probably now it's time for us to consider natural uh, base in body care or cosmetics. And you mentioned a few things like exfoliants, like uh, uh, oat uh, or other grains or salts. Can you talk a little bit about what are the kinds of things I now need to store in my bathroom to... Uh, you know, um, <laughs> uh, become introduced to natural cosmetics? Yes, well, whether you're a man or a woman, exfoliation is a really um, health-inspiring, invigorating thing to do. And there's nothing better to do it with than some natural sea salt, which can be a uh, good quality sea salt, can be obtained quite cheaply nowadays. So you can buy from your local supermarket or a health food store a bag of sea salt and taking a handful of sea salt, maybe adding a little bit of almond oil and an invigorating um, essential oil such as rosemary, Uh a handful of the sea salt, the oil, the rosemary and massaging your body with that in the shower is one of the best and probably the most invigorating body scrubs you could give yourself. So you massage uh, the body with this uh, oil, you know, almond oil and the mixture, and then you have shower, is that correct? That's right. You stand in your shower basin or under your shower without the water and start rubbing the salt and the oil over the body, maybe massaging from the ankles upwards, Uh, paying particular attention to any dry areas like knees and elbows and inhale the aroma as well. Rosemary is really good for circulation. There are contraindications. If you have high blood pressure, then use lemon instead. Uh, If you're prone to epilepsy, avoid rosemary and again go for uh, something like lavender or citrus fruit essential oil. Uh, But this has a a wonderful effect on improving the circulation, getting rid of dead skin cells, and um, for men in particular as well, helps prevent any ingrowing hairs, men being hairier than ladies. So it's a really invigorating, detoxifying activity to do, and very cheap and simple, and everything's natural. That's the main thing. And uh, and I, I I suppose all the various things you mentioned like rosemary, lavender, they're all antifungal as well. They certainly are. They certainly are. And if you want to make it even more antifungal, you could add a couple of drops of tea tree. Everybody's familiar with the essential oil tea tree, yeah. and that's a wonderful antifungal agent. So you could use that in a foot scrub, and when that would be really useful. When you say um, uh, lavender, do you mean Beverly lavender essential oil or, uh, you know, dried lavender flowers that you get? Well, I was actually referring to the essential oil, but as you've um, just mentioned, dried lavender flowers added to the salt is is wonderful. You can even um, purchase powdered lavender flowers that you can add to the salt. You get the wonderful fragrance Mm-hmm. which again is a very soothing to the nervous system. Aromatherapy has that effect. As you inhale it, these wonderful aromas just affect us internally and externally. Yeah. Um, a good smell always makes you feel better, but yes. it's, it is having an effect on the body also. Yeah. What I'd like to ask you, Beverly, is you know when it comes to essential oils, because... Aromatherapy is a highly specialized uh, modality and uh, as far as I know, as a practitioner, it's not just good enough to go and buy the lavender oil that's on special from anywhere, but you need to be really careful about what kind of essential oils you buy, where you buy, how you use 
essential oils. Because you are an experienced aromatherapist, can you actually explain to uh, our listeners uh, what's the connection between essential oils and aromatherapy, how it works, what to look for, what not to do when you buy essential oils and use them? Yes, most definitely. Aromatherapy or essential oils, um, depending on the method used to extract the essential oil and how easy it is to collect the plant material, then obviously this will reflect on the price. I try to say to people that it's a little bit like when you buy wine, you can buy a very cheap bottle of wine Mm -hmm. or you can buy a real expensive bottle of wine or a bottle of champagne. So essential oils, depending on which oil, such as something such as lavender is a fairly reasonably priced essential oil, but something like rose or jasmine or neroli from orange blossom is almost equivalent to the cost of gold. Um, It's very expensive. So um, also, as you quite rightly said, uh, cheap doesn't always mean that it is the best oil to use because often cheaper essential oils can come from poor sources or could could be um, adulterated in some way, shape or form yeah. because aromatherapy and the use of essential oils is also big business. So try to use quality brands and try to buy um, organic where possible. I tend to um, use a company um, in the UK called Oshardi UK mm-hmm. on or another company, Aromantics, where I can rest assured that the oils have been extracted from a good source yeah, and um, they have a good background, a good heritage. Yeah, I think, you know, it's important at this point to remind our listeners how much of the actual plant material gets uh, used up to produce, say, 10 milliliters of an essential oil for instance can you give an example of how much lavender is needed or how much rose is needed to produce 10 milliliters well at the moment um if you imagine that the the essential oil comes from the rose petals to be distilled uh, it's highly highly concentrated so uh, tons of rose petals just to get a small amount of a rose oil and at the moment to buy a litre of rose oil you're looking at six thousand pounds so you know it's a really highly prized essential oil with a a wonderful aroma and in fact they say the scent of a rose is the closest scent to the natural scent of a woman so it's highly prized in perfumery Mm -hmm. that's interesting uh and uh If I were to ask you, Beverly, if there are three essential oils that every man and every woman must know in the context of body care, which ones would those be? Well, the first one uh, that I would mention for for both men and women is, of course, lavender, the high-altitude lavender. Um, Lavender is so universal and does so many things, so... You've mentioned already antifungal, antiseptic, antibacterial. So it has all those direct dermal applications. We always recommend in the UK that you dilute any essential oils first in a base oil, a vegetable-based base oil, Mm -hmm. which we call a carrier oil. Yes. Uh, uh, But lavender also has so many therapeutic effects on an emotional level. When you inhale it, it's almost like having a massage from the inside out because it has a very soothing and calming effect on the nervous system. As we inhale it, it really helps to relieve um, all the symptoms of stress and anxiety. So it's a real good one and everybody has such busy lives. Just having um, a bottle of lavender at hand is always helpful. So that's the first one Okay. I, I would suggest. Which are the other two? The other two, uh, one I'm very, very fond of, is uh, chamomile, Roman chamomile. It's a great pain reliever. It's anti-inflammatory. It's calming and soothing. Um, We tend to, in this day and age, many of us have jobs where we're either working physically or even if we're working just sat at a desk, we can get stiff and suffer from aches and pains. And chamomile is really good for easing discomfort, a great analgesic, a great pain reliever. 
Um, it's also, again, as far as stress-related uh, symptoms, it's soothing in cases of stress. And other areas of inflammation, so anybody who suffers from irritated skin, it can be diluted. And they do say when you combine the lavender and the chamomile, those two essential oils have the capacity to increase each other's pain-relieving properties. Mm -hmm. So um, any swollen joints, tennis elbow, um, we get condition. Lots of builders suffer from housemaid's knee, swelling of the knee, so it's really good for those conditions. Mm -hmm. And then my third oil, particularly for women, would be geranium. Mm -hmm. uh, geraniums are really balancing oil, and um, women tend to be like flowers. We open and close depending on our mood and emotions. So geranium is very good at regulating our mood, and it also helps to balance our hormones. Mm -hmm. It's good for our general circulation, so it keeps everything flowing. Mm -hmm. And probably let's not leave men out because um, I would yeah, say please don't. that yeah, well, for, for men, I'd, I'd say something like black pepper or ginger, which Hi. are really invigorating aromas. Yes. And good for muscul muscle care. So if you like to go to the gym a lot, then um, we need to help get the muscles. When you've used your muscles, you need to have a day of rest, but to, to recover. Help, yeah, to, to help them recover those oils would be my suggestion. Okay, see, that's that's good. So if I'm starting an essential oil kit as a man, I would have black pepper or ginger, Roman chamomile, yes, and uh, high altitude lavender. That's right, yes. And as a the... woman, it's high altitude lavender, Roman chamomile, and geranium. It is, that's correct. What interests me is... Uh, why do you specify it has to be Roman chamomile? I've always known when I go to a cafe, I ask, okay, do you have chamomile tea? I'll just have it. Should I ask for Roman chamomile or German chamomile? What's the difference? Okay, well, there are uh, three commonly used chamomiles. There's German chamomile, which is um, the most expensive of the three, actually, and it's very high in a chemical called azulene, which is an anti-inflammatory uh, chemical. Uh, it's a superb to use for all the reasons that I mentioned earlier with chamomile. Roman chamomile still has wonderful properties, but is at a price that is more affordable for the regular user. And then there is um, a Moroccan chamomile, which is a more wilder version, uh, less anti-inflammatory, but I still find it very useful. Uh, for the treatment of tummy upsets, such as uh, colitis. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it's still usable. But the one that most people will be able to afford and still enjoy all these wonderful effects is the Roman chamomile. Okay, that's fantastic to know. And what's the difference between a high-altitude lavender and a low-altitude lavender? Okay, well, um, depending on where the plant grows, obviously the environment will affect that plant. And plants growing at higher altitude produce more calming, soothing, uplifting chemicals. And so the high altitude lavender is high in a group, in a chemical family called esters, which give it its wonderful soothing properties. As um, we grow lavender at lower altitude, it becomes um, more camphorous in its composition. Mm -hmm. So it's still very useful, it still has many, many qualities. But for skin care, uh, skin regeneration and stress relief, the high altitude is the one that we tend to go for. Okay. You know, uh, fungal infection is something which is very common, especially in cold, damp countries. Uh, yes. Also in warm, damp countries, because it's the dampness that kind of uh, allows for growth of fungus, and that leads to so many distortions in terms of uh, uh, our internal health and also the skin, and particularly, you know, in men and uh, hair loss and in women, you know, with the nails and yes. 
uh, all of that. So if you are looking at fungal infection uh, and the antifungal properties of essential oils, can you talk to me a little bit about that, Beverly? Yes, um, you're quite right. There, there is a, a rise in this condition. Um, when, when people get fungal conditions of the nail, it is very, very hard to treat. So you could use tea tree on the nail. Mm -hmm. uh, you could massage it into the nail plate and around the cuticle. Yes. We often recommend that. Uh, but now I'm seeing an increase in fungal conditions on the skin, especially people are going to the gym a lot. Um, and so they may get they may get athlete what we call athlete's foot. Yes. Um, so a, a good trick here to help uh, repair that is we're trying to... Uh, um, talcum powder is no longer a popular product. Yes. Uh, it's, there's been a lot of bad press about it. and a, a, Apparently talcum powder is in the, the um, same kind of category as asbestos, which we know is not good for our health whatsoever. Yeah, but, and, and, and do you think you know, that is true? Because you know, I know that now uh, mothers are actually instructed by doctors not to use talcum powder on yes. their babies. Do, do you think there is some truth to it? Yes, uh, most definitely. I, I mean, rather than using talcum powder, if there are any um, any risks whatsoever, it's best to avoid it. But you could just buy some uh, corn flour, we call it in, in the UK, and arrowroot powder and make your own very natural um, talcum powder alternative and add a little bit of tea tree to it if it's uh, to make a foot powder to yes. fight athlete's foot because um, as I say sports people um, do suffer from this and it's a really simple kitchen cupboard alternative than using a fungal powder that could affect our breathing and cause other uh, detrimental um, effects on our health so corn flour a bit of arrowroot powder mm -hmm. some tea tree in, a, in a, um, a cheap sugar shaker that you can buy from lots of the stores, the pound stores nowadays, and you've got perfect antifungal for the feet. Uh -huh. um, okay. And that dusting powder could be used on, on the body too. Um, although I know Yulia mentioned this oil on her interview, uh, calendula oil is marvellous. It has many antifungal properties. Mm-hmm. So if you are getting fungal conditions on the body, you can make a beautiful body oil with calendula is from marigold. It's calendula officinalis, uh, the marigold flower. Yes. Which has been macerated in a base oil of either sunflower or almond oil. And uh, it's a beautiful yellow healing oil and it's miraculous on the skin. Miraculous. Um, I've used it on um, a cat that had a uh, ringworm. Mm. And um, and even a guinea pig that lost all its fur, and um, the calendula helped it grow a whole new coat back, and it was amazing how simple and safe calendula oil is. So that's one of my biggies for any fungal conditions. Wow, that's fantastic. So Beverly, uh, what I understand is that okay, beautiful skin starts with healthy skin. So we have covered a lot of things that one needs to pay attention in terms of antifungal, antibacterial, all of these properties and what natural uh, kind of ingredients that we can use uh, to keep our skin healthy and beautiful. Um, we have a few minutes left, but I'd like you to take uh, our listeners through uh, a ritual, say they get up in the morning and what can they do to start their journey of natural cosmetics? Right, well this is the wonderful word that you use there BJ, ritual, because we have such busy lives that just by building in some wonderful natural rituals, it will make uh, people feel better straight away, giving themselves time mm -hmm. and the beauty of natural cosmetics such as Yulia's breast balm is that it helps people get to know their own bodies mm -hmm. people have got so out of touch with their own bodies yet by having a process where you apply your breast balm each day would mean that and I'm talking about men and women here 
it would mean that you're actually checking your body and identifying if there have been any changes, whilst at the same time you're helping to hydrate the skin to help um, discourage uh, or slow down the aging process. I'm totally not against anti-aging. In fact, I think anti-aging is a terrible word. Where, um, becoming old, uh, you know, is a privileged a privilege that not everybody yes. uh, gets to get old. So, you know, we should celebrate our body as it changes. But first thing in the morning, the most important thing is your cleansing ritual. Mm-hmm. By the way, may I just mention here that nighttime is equally as important. Yes. And um, ladies who wear makeup, if they don't cleanse their skin of makeup before bed, the skin can start to age by up to eight days every time that they do this. Wow. Yeah, so um, nighttime is a time when the skin renews itself and um, it really needs to be clean before we retire. Uh, but in the morning, I'm going to suggest the use of olive oil with some castor oil mm-hmm. massaged into the skin for both men and ladies. Um, you could add a couple of drops of lavender and some geranium to that oil base, massage it into the skin. Yes. And o- olive oil has been used as a cleanser for many, many years. Uh, it was introduced by the Romans. And, um, so it's okay to use this both on the facial skin and the body? Most definitely, most definitely. Mm-hmm. And the, the use of castor oil. Castor oil has great big molecules that almost suck the dirt out of the pores. So it's a really cleansing oil. So that would be a really good one for cleansing um, uh, specifically the face. Yes. And then remove it with a warm, damp face cloth. Yes. And then apply, um, once, you've, once you've showered, you could use your salt scrub, as we mentioned earlier, in the shower. Yes. And the oil I recommended, the rosemary, is very awakening and invigorating. Uh-huh. So a beautiful routine to give you that get up and go that often you need in the morning. Yes. And then there's an array of different uh, body oils that you could use, but one of my favourites for the body is sweet almond oil yeah as it's deeply moisturizing uh-huh. and again you can add your own fragrance to that so thinking of our three oils you could have lavender and chamomile or lavender ginger and black pepper if you're um, a gentleman and into sports activities uh, and just make it just making this uh, time for you to look after your body and get to know your body and it's wonderful to know that everything you put on your body is totally natural. Uh, so, Beverly, when you say sweet almond oil for moisturizing, yes, should it be applied before shower or after showering? Now, I know in um, in Ayurvedic pra- practice, they sometimes oil before showering. I um, suggest that you shower first, mm-hmm. um, towel dry but don't over over rub the body and then apply the oil starting at the legs working the way up all over the body and then specifically applying your breast balm to the breast area um, I also use a, a rub a tummy rub so anyone who um, is prone to digestive upsets um, could use something like ginger mm-hmm. in a little bit of almond oil so I apply that each morning and just creating your own fragrant ritual. Okay. You know, on, on a day that you need more invigoration, you add your oils like lemongrass and, and peppermint. And on days when you need to be calm, you go back to your lavender and chamomile. Wow, that's actually a very good toolkit that you have provided, Beverly. And uh, as we come almost to the close of our show, Let's go back to the very initial topic that we talked about, which is, you know, I actually was very fascinated about your work with Breast Care UK, where the fact sheet lists all the toxins that can have an impact, a negative impact on breast cancer. And you develop breast care oil. And now Yulia has uh, given a recipe of breast balm. Can you talk about it and how to use it? 
because we are going to make this breast balm available on uh, uh, IU Wave uh, e store for uh, our listeners who may want to start using it. Yes, that's right. Um, so, as Yulia had suggested, people could make this themselves or purchase it from you. And it's using um, cocoa butter and olive oil and, again, some of the essential oils that I've mentioned. It's a very simple balm. Uh, it, it, obviously, it's in a, a jar. You keep it in um, a cool place. If you're going to travel with it, sometimes a heat will change its temperature. But you just take a little of the balm each morning and warm it in your hands, or you could do it in the evening. And apply it to the, the breast area in a circular, almost like a figure of eight around the breast area, mm -hmm. making sure that you check right up to the armpits. So it's a, a deeply moisturizing and nourishing balm, which the aroma is also going to have a very soothing, calming effect on the body and mind. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also getting you to be aware, to be conscious And that's the key I think we need to get over to your listeners. It's almost like a self-detection. Yes. And it's, an, it's a living affirmation yeah. to lo love your body, really. Okay, that's fantastic. And, you know, thanks to you, thanks to Yulia for the breast balm recipe and idea. And Ayurveda is more than uh, happy to supply to uh, those who like to use it. Uh, and... Uh, Beverly, whenever I travel or whenever there is an occasion where I need to buy gifts, I always turn out of good ideas. Either I go for whoever has enticed me to buy something like a nice perfume or duty-free shop or somewhere. But can you give me some key ideas for uh, our listeners if they're doing a last-minute gift shopping Uh, in the context of, you know, natural cosmetics, what should they be looking for? Okay, well, there, there are some amazing companies on the market at the moment with um, some amazing products. But if you remember, if you're buying for a man, then men t tend to be uh, more worried about their hair. Um, so I would look for um, a shampoo without sodium lauryl sulfate. So um, in Europe, There's NiceShops.com has an array of organic products available. If you need to dash into Tesco or one of the big supermarkets, uh, then um, Trilogy is a range that, again, I've, I've looked at the labeling and they seem to be totally free from. They seem like a wonderful brand. And Walida, I know that they've been around for um, many, many years. Almost, I would say, in a hundred years, but it's not quite, but, but nearly as long. And in the UK, most health food shops sell a range called Lavera. And um, they have hand cream, body creams. But what you want to do is try to encourage your family and friends to become what I call clean and green. Try yes. to get them to be more conscious and aware of what they're using and to start to look at the labels. So that would be my advice for a man go for sodium laurel sulfate free shampoo maybe for a lady a nice hand cream that is free from parabens and at least they're on the start of their journey of becoming clean and green wow that's fantastic Beverly you know like how difficult it is with very little time to be reading the small prints on a label But are there yeah. any quick tips from you? Okay, if you see this particular sign, you can fairly be sure, yes, yeah, it's it. For instance, uh, the bio eco label on uh, cosmetics. Yes, uh, most good companies now are aware that you haven't got time. And let's face it, most of the labels is in such small print, it's hard to see. So a really good company will actually say on the front of the product, No, for instance, I'm holding a can of um, deodorant in my hand at the moment, and it says on the front, no aluminium, no alcohol, no allergens, no parabens. Right. Um, so that's a good company. So if you pick the product up and it's telling you already, it's helping to educate you, then you know you're on a, um, a winner with that cosmetic. 
Fantastic. And, you know, as you and I, as practitioners, we both know it's not what you put on your body, it's also what you put into your body. So, a healthy skin, beauty is a reflection of inner health, which of course is largely dependent on what we eat, what we drink. So, what are your tips, Beverly, to have beautiful skin? Uh, what are the things that we should be looking for in terms of nutrition? I would say sugar free, you know. Yes, yes, I agree with you most definitely. And and I know that you will um, know more about diet than I, but what I do know is that a diet uh, rich in fruit and veg that's obviously full of antioxidants is really, really um, uh, good for the skin. Eating regular meals and not overeating avoiding processed foods as much as possible and what I say is the, 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 the best thing for skin totally is water keep hydrated you know our bodies are composed of a high percentage of water and water evaporates from our skin all the time so make sure that you have your two liters of water a day sip the water throughout the day uh, and that would be my best advice for a wonderful clear skin Thank you so much, Beverly. That was such an informative and eye-opening uh, conversation with you. And I hope I can talk to you more about men's uh, skin care and body care and men's cosmetics as well. Um, and to look up uh, on information about Beverly's uh, work, you can go to www.portionshop.co.uk. It's P O T I. O N S H O P dot C O dot U K. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. So do stay tuned to Are You Well? And I'll be looking forward to talking to you again next week on UK Health Radio. Thank you. Thank you.